Venice waiting for relief from days of what forecasters call exceptional flooding. flooding. Planes, trains and automobiles, all inventions that were totally unheard of back in biblical times. Way back when, the transportation options were much more limited. Caravans, horseback, on foot, catapult, giant hollow horses on wheels, oh yeah, and boats. Built of wood and meant to sail the seven seas, boats are some of the most enduring forms of transportation available. In fact, a lot of boats really haven't changed a whole lot over the course of history as we know it. Floating, wind-powered vessels that are capable of carrying numerous passengers and cargo loads. Although wind power is mostly used recreationally these days, and the tubs carrying precious goods are less likely to be plant-based. But I digress. I don't need to convince you that boats are an ever-popular mode of transportation. What I do need to do is convince you that if Noah's Ark existed today, it would be totally different than the Noah's Ark of days gone by. Hello fellow friends and philosophers, and welcome Welcome back to the most mind-bending channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. I'm your disembodied voice in the void, Keegan Hughes, and today we take to the seas once more to answer a pressing question, what if Noah's Ark existed today? Before we get started, make sure to fire us a like down below and subscribe for more quizzical content. Let's get nautical. I'm assuming that most of you already know the story of Noah's Ark, but for those who don't, I will provide an abridged version. This story has roots in all sorts of ancient texts, the earliest originating in Mesopotamia. Many major religions have their own version of the story as well, including Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. There are cultural and plot-based differences between each telling, but they all involve the same major elements. A flood, a god or gods that causes a flood, a boat, some animals, a version of the man named Noah. Now, the biblical version goes a little something like this. God decides that humanity has become too inundated with sin and must be cleansed. To do this, a great flood is called forth to wipe the earth clean. A pure man, Noah, is chosen to build an ark that will house two of each of the world's animals, one male and one female, in order to save them for when the flood subsides. The ark is then built and Noah, along with his family and all the animals, survives atop the rising waters until the world is deemed fit to be dry once more. Classic. Anything that has to do with collecting animals is always a hit with the kids too. Pokemon, Digimon, biblical stories of old. It's like a big floating zoo, right? Now that we've cleared up the base information, we need to move forward. We can start considering what it might be like if Noah's Ark sailed again. The first thing that should be taken into account is the size of our boat. The original Ark measured at 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits in height. For those unfamiliar with ancient units of measurement, a cubit is approximately 44 centimeters, which makes our seafaring pet store 132 meters long, 22 meters wide, and 13.2 meters tall. To put that in perspective, the Titanic is almost twice as big, measuring in at 269 meters long, 28 meters wide, and 32 meters tall. And if we want to go totally modern, one of the largest boats ever made, the Seawise Giant, was almost twice as long as the famous Titanic, coming in at 458.46 meters long. Sheesh, there are some big boats out there. If we want to fit all of our animals comfortably, while remaining within the reasonable limits of shipbuilding, it's probably best to say that the Ark 2.0 should be closer to the giant than its previous iteration. Now that we have our big Ark blueprints, what should we build it out of? A ship that big cannot be sustained using the same mysterious gopher wood cited as being the main material on the first Ark. Let's stick with the Seawise Giant and build a metal Ark. If we were to do so, we would end up with a vessel weighing 657,019 tons using the displacement method. Sheesh. Okay, okay. Enough talk of measurements. Let's get to the good stuff. The animals. In the original stories, it was common for the boat to be divided into three zones to accommodate the animals. The lowest area would be for the wild beasts, the middle area would house domesticated animals and birds, and the top would be for humans only. Males and females would be separated by sharp spikes to prevent breeding, and the animals wouldn't have very much room to move around. Something tells me that this setup wasn't exactly tailored to the needs of each species. We would probably want to consider a more modern approach, coming back to that floating zoo idea I mentioned earlier. It would be lovely to ensure that each and every species is as comfortable and as self-sufficient as possible, but that could prove to be a very tall order. About 35,000 species were saved by Noah in the biblical story, which means that there were some 70,000 animals on board at any given time. While that is a commendable feat, that is nowhere near the amount of species that can be found on our dear old planet Earth. There are over 9 million species of animals found on Earth, ranging from tiny multicellular organisms to giant beasts like the blue whale. 
you heard me right. Not accounting for plants, we have heterotrophs in the seven digit figures. Heterotrophs are species that rely on other organisms for food, by the way. With such huge numbers, we are going to need to figure out what animals are making it on board. If we don't take enough, biodiversity post-flood will take a big hit, which is really bad for the health of our planet at large. Although, an all-consuming flood is probably pretty bad for the environment too, but hey. We're looking for solutions here, no fixating on the problems. So immediately, aquatic species are off the guest list. No fish, no plankton, no aquatic mammals, they can all fend for themselves. It doesn't make sense to take up space on board with species who are able to live in the floodwaters anyways. If anything, they should be happy this is happening. Roam free, little dudes. It's also hard to account for microscopic organisms. It would be really cool to develop microscopic cages and micromanage those tiny tiny beings, but I don't think it would be worth it in the end. Many single and multi-cell organisms would be able to fare well in the water too, so they're off the list. Already, we've narrowed down our selection of boat-friendly beasts. We would probably be safe grabbing all of the chordates, you know, beings with spinal cords, and plopping them down in an enclosure somewhere on the ark. We're pretty familiar with these, considering that we, and so many of the creatures we know and love, belong to this group. That puts the count around 100,000, but fret not. We can subtract all of the fish with spines, or something around 34,000. So we have around 66,000 left by my count. Multiply that by two, and we can see the space on our grand ship shrink and shrink. Plus, imagine trying to cram all these mostly wild animals into a gigantic metal ship. That would not go over easily. So instead of theorizing the final count and the space they would take up, I've decided to take a step forward in the planning of this arc and consider the widespread chaos that would arise if a world-ending flood were to crash through. Back in the day, I'm sure Noah was able to prepare his voyage pretty quietly. He was spoken to directly by God and had enough time to plan it out and snag each animal without too much interference. Today, that would not be the case. If God spoke to somebody and said, hey, the world's about to end and you're the only worthy one, go collect some animals and prepare an ark, it would immediately make waves. It would be the number one news item full stop. Once weather prediction science confirms the impending disaster, people would begin to scramble to get a seat on board the ship. And I mean, Noah would have to let some people on board. How is one man and his family supposed to take care for some 132,000 plus animals? The Ark would need animal caretakers, food preparers, navigators, plumbers, waste management experts, tech support, and more. You think today's job market is competitive? In a few weeks, the jobs on the Ark will be the only jobs. Because everything else is lying at the bottom of the ocean. Whether we would do it lottery style, by qualification, or just be forced to let the richest people hop on, I can't claim to know. All I do know is that there would be worldwide chaos surrounding the decision. I am sure plenty of folks would just double down on their sinful lifestyles though. Make sure they squeeze the last bit of enjoyment out of the world before it goes up in flames, or down in waves, I guess. These last minute rabble rousing revelers would probably cause quite a bit of trouble on their own, tearing down the remaining monuments to our society as a sort of last hurrah. The final moments before the flood would be interesting, with nihilists basking in their final moments of their life, plenty of existential dread and panic in those who can't make it onto the ark, and a crack team of experts, or rich people buying their way on, populating the boat and outfitting it with as much modern tech as possible to ease the voyage. And then, of course, the one thing guaranteed to happen if Noah's Ark existed today, the world would flood, and anything not on the Ark would be consumed. Not the most sunshiny option, I know. But hey, that's what happens when a deity decides to wipe the slate clean. When all is said and done, and the olive branch is delivered unto Noah, maybe our boat dwellers will land somewhere safe, release the animals, and start anew with the modern resources packed upon the ship. Good luck. And with that, I believe I've said all there is to say about the events that would unfold if Noah's Ark existed today. What do you think of my largely unscientific animal count? Could you somehow make it work? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Speaking of comments, here are some of the more interesting inquisitions from the last video. Art M asks, so you're saying he already exists? Since a lot of this stuff seems to actually be going on. Well, Art, I'm not saying that Nihilarthotep doesn't exist, so do what you will with that evidence. Dev Who 11 says, Sorry, I'm still trying to imagine what Niall Arthotep's TikTok would look like. No need to imagine, you've already probably seen some of his work. Hybrid Sock says, Hey guys, Niall Arthotep here. Thanks for watching this video. Smash that like button and don't forget to hit the bell. Niall Arthotep, those other guys were just asking about you. Thanks for making my job easier. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.